Hey everybody, welcome to the channel and thanks for checking out the channel. It's called Ham Radio Dude. This right here is a wire winder for portable use. And I recently gave away 40 of these on a live stream. Now you might be wondering, well, why did you give 40 of them away? And the answer is I needed testers. This wire winder to get started is going to be available online for sale on Etsy.com. I'll link it below, but it's also available for free on sites like Thingiverse.com where you could download the STL and you could print it. You're thinking to yourself, well, I don't have a printer. That's fine. A lot of times you could download the file and you could take it to a local library and have them print it. And guess what? It'll only typically cost the cost of filament. And it's so this wire winder is fairly strong as it's made with ASA material and that has ultraviolet protection properties. Weighing in at 0.425 ounces without a BNC and 0 0.60 ounces with a BNC, I'm going to build this out today and at the end we'll weigh it with 10 or 20 meters worth of dipole wire. This wire winder is fairly short. It's about four and a half inches in length by about three inches in width. And I would say roughly less than an inch in height. That's more than an inch, hold on. Just about an inch, just a little less than an inch. And anyway, that makes it very lightweight. It was not intended for something like a T140-43, although if somebody really wanted to make it work, they could. They may lose out the ability for the straps that I put in place here or to use the straps that would go here. And I'll show you all of that in just a moment. Instead, it was made for smaller Type 43 toroids and other toroids as well that would fit this platform a little nicer. This Type 43 toroid will be listed in the comments below or the description below so that you can go online and you can purchase your own. So how does this all work? Watch this. I'll insert my BNC. Now the thing about the BNC, and uh, my buddy Mike K8MRD taught me this, you see there's a little notch down here. I do this because long ago he told me that, hey, if you have a notch, everything won't move around as much internally. Now there is a little bit extra tolerance on these winders and I think I'm okay with that because ultimately when I tighten down the other side with the lug, it doesn't seem to shift as much. Without that notch though, it might shift fully in a circle and then as it turns and it turns, your magnet wire eventually rips off right here. I do also, while I'm putting this together, I wanna give a huge thank you to everybody who sees these build videos that I've been making and these design videos and they give their input about things that could be possibly improved on or things that are really cool and work. Um, because even though sometimes I can't respond to them as for example, lately, I just really do understand them. I put them in the back of my head and I appreciate them for sure. So I have that BNC on there kind of loosely at the moment because I don't have a wrench right here. But uh, the next thing I would do is I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna build out this small toroid here and today I'm going to build a dipole. And the reason I want to build a dipole is when we talk about QRP work, we, for example, maybe it's an NFED half wave. This toroid will not be able to sustain a larger amount of power as opposed to a dipole. And that's because of the impedance mismatch. Something like a higher impedance limiting the amount of current. So yeah, you know, that's why I'm going to build a one-to-one -one today. I'm actually really curious to see how much power I'm going to be able to put through a dipole with a toroid this small. And so again, I do want to point out that uh, this isn't a tutorial on how to build a dipole or a one-to-one, -one, uh, but a one-to-one -one is one primary, one secondary with the equal number of turns. And that's what I tried to do here. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to place the toroid here. Now, one thing I already noticed is well, it happens to do with zip ties, and maybe these holes are a little bit too small for zip ties. I tried to find the smallest zip ties I could, and I was unsuccessful. So I may have to drill these holes out, or alternatively, what I'm going to do today is I'm going to put the zip ties through the strap section. And if I did this right, I should be able to put zip ties on here, as well as a strap at the end. You'll see what I mean here in just a second. These are the zip ties that I found at my local Ace Hardware. One of the things that somebody had told me about the other winder here is that it was very difficult to get a toroid on because the toroid is supposed to kind of like sit here 
but as you can see that the BNC kind of meets up with the toroid. So it becomes finer motor skills to get in there and get everything soldered. I like it that way, but uh, I could definitely recognize where that could be. Uh, cumbersome would be a good word. After just a few moments, this is what I came up with here. I have these two wires soldered in. I haven't soldered in anything here, but I want to show you what I'm going to do so you can get ideas if you'd like. As far as the zip ties go, I meant to have the zip ties up here on the corner and down here on the corner, but the way they turned out, they're just in the middle of the strap section. So that's gonna cause some interference issues. And now I know to make these holes larger. And now we're on to the antenna section of the winder dipole that I'm making. And what I'm going to do is I'm gonna run a post through here with small ring connectors, like M3 small. When I build things, I typically like to design them around things I could pick up at my local Ace Hardware because they have a lot of different hardware available. And uh, that was the case with these posts as well as the two nuts that are on the back. I'll let you know in the comments or in the description below what size these posts as well as these nuts are. But as you'll see here, I took these ring connectors and I put them through the posts and they sit really nice on the top side of, well, the winder. And now on the bottom side, I'll go ahead and I'm going to add my poly stealth wire. I went with poly stealth because it is relatively small and lightweight. 250 feet was a reasonable price and it should fit on this wire wider nicely. Whether I want to do a 20 meter dipole, 40 meter dipole, I bet you I could even fit an 80 meter dipole on here. Uh, but again, today we're just going to go with a 10 meter dipole and I have an idea. What I'm trying to tell you is we could always link them if we needed to. With my poly stealth wire, I'm going to start on the side of the dipole that will have the posts and I'm going to start on the outer hole or the, the hole closest to the end of the winder and I'm going to start on the bottom. I'm going to go up and I'm going to fish down. I'm going to fish up. And then for that last one here, as we fish down, should make it really easy for us just to take a ring connector and put it right here. One of the things I need to check real quick is will the ring connector fit here and that hole be here, or do I need to move them? That is going to be a tight fit, but I think that we can make that work. I'll be right back. And so this is actually a great point here. You know, I gave away 40 of these, and it's really nice to be able to get input and be able to get feedback. And honestly, I could do most of it myself, as we're seeing right here. But uh, right there, I made this work. The ring connector's in, after all. But look at that bend. That's something we want to avoid, because the more bend we have like that, is this camera gonna focus? The more bend we have like that, the, the more issues may arise. So of course there's already two solutions. It's just instead of starting going under, over, you know, up, down, up, down, start down, up, down, skip that last hole, and then you should have plenty of uh, distance or gap here between the holes. Now, the easy thing for me to do will be to go into CAD and to shift these down just a little bit, these two holes. That'll take a whole 12 seconds. And that's what's really nice when you have a guy designing these things and able to give himself feedback and then make the changes as well. So we're gonna go ahead and just kind of wind this one up for just a moment here as I get toward the end, since it's a 10 meter dipole, I'm sure it would work on other ones as well, but I'm just going to kind of fish these through here so they stay in place kind of nicely as I go for this side with the other half of the dipole. And so that was kind of what I was talking about there where there's one hole left I just didn't go through. Uh, again, it works. It doesn't seem like it'll be a problem, but I think moving these down will definitely be the better option. So what I'm gonna do real quick here is let me wind this up. And now even with the zip ties, I'm still going to try to apply the strap. Uh, for the strap, I found this one wrap thin ties 50 ties, eight inches by one half of an inch. So the key factor there would be one half of an inch. And again, with these zip ties, we might have a little bit of an issue. <laughs> Surprisingly not. I'm just trying to figure out which way I want to do it. There we go, under, just like that. Actually, that fit just fine. No worries or problems there. Uh, still, maybe I'll make these holes just a tad bit bigger as well. And that way you can put those zip ties through there. So that actually poses one other significant problem. 
So this is actually a good point too to mention that, but also when you're building your own, when you're making your own winder, whether it's out of a cutting board or whatever it is, when you come up with these hurdles, you could fix them yourselves. And uh, the the problem that I'm seeing is, let's say we have an inverted V dipole, okay? Maybe this isn't as significant for a sloper configuration and fed half wave because maybe you just have a, a little clip up there and you have your wire tied to here, right? So you clip your wire in uh, and then you have a nice tight sloper configuration and fed half wave. But with a dipole, we need to have an inverted V and we need to be able to figure out how to secure both of those sections toward the ground. And I think the best thing is, is we're going to create a little uh, insulator on each end of this winder so that for the antenna wire, so that uh, it would be a lot easier in the future. And speaking of these, which color do I like better? You know, I'm going to go with plain gray today. This was another concept and thought. We're talking about a sloper configuration. We're talking about even a dipole configuration. And this dipole is going to hang from the top of a mast. Like, let's say it's the Little Dude 6. You can clip this onto that cap that the Little Dude 6 has, and then you could do your inverted V. Be right back. Okay, just been about way more than an hour. But I came up with this little silly kind of design here. Silly, but it works. And what I did is I fished the wire in one, two, three, four holes, right? I don't even really need to tie it because it's nice and tight. And I still have strain relief here. Maybe I put a groove right down in here so that there's less of a bend on this top portion here. But then I went ahead and I also put a carabiner on here. And the carabiner now allows me to tie my 550 cord or whatever I'm going to use as wire so that this wire stays nice and tight. I'll do that to the other side, and I think I am going to go just like really quick set this up so you could see how it would look. And of course, I need to test it for functionality. When I talk about functionality, I'm not talking about the toroid today. I'm talking about how the winder performed, how these insulators performed. But I think it's kind of cool that you get to see the development and how everything kind of works out. One thing I want to note here is I did 10 turns as this dipole. And I know I told you this isn't a video on how to make a dipole, but somebody's going to be like, oh, that's horrible horrible. It's not going to work. And uh, again, radio is about experimentation. So I did some math and I think that for 10 meters where I'm going to be resonant at 10 turns, it should give me somewhere around 800 to a thousand ohms of impedance. And basically what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to stop. And I do hope I'm saying this correctly, but I'm basically trying to stop the antenna and the coax from being one antenna. So basically, after all these turns, we're basically going to go into our coax and the coax as well as the antenna are now separated. I hope that makes sense. And I know there's further testing to do on that. And I have to put that in there so I don't hear it. So anyway, let's go out in the field and test this out. Wait a second. Uh, one more thing we need to do is we need to test the weight. <laughs> you know, one thing I do hate, it's not a huge deal, but I, I'm just kind of pointing it out here as I'm putting this together is, uh, well, that's a little bit, there we go, the different colors. So I have green, orange, and gray. And that, uh, to me, I just, I can't stand that. It, it's fine. It's not going to affect anything. Actually, it just ruined my whole day. All right, the weight. Yeah, 1.625 ounces. Not bad for a 10-meter dipole. Let's go to the field. I set up the mast, and I clipped in the wire winder. And again, pardon the wind, on the right-hand side where my finger is right now, you could actually see the fluorescent yellow uh, 550 cord that comes down. And there's one on the other side as well. It goes down from the top of the mast in an inverted V fashion. And uh, I did my best there to keep it at the correct angles. But, you know, we're out in the field and we have to adapt a little bit. Now, to the top of that, you can't really see it, but that's the little dude that it's attached to on the top. Let me get you a better angle. I mean, I'm just not sure there's going to be a better angle, but there's the little dude uh, on the topper. I have that winder that we just built there. So you can kind of see how I did it. The BNC connector fits just well when I bring it down and I'll show that to you. And then I have a small piece of that. Actually, that Velcro cord that held the wire together was very useful to hold the coax in place. And then the coax comes down and the coax comes down. And uh, right about here, I took a carabiner and I put another piece of coax right here. So that kind of then runs out to the radio. 
I also wanted to show you the insulators that I had made and how I utilized them so you could have a better idea. They work just fine. Hey everybody, let's do a recap and we're going to make this kind of a very broad recap. Everything from filming this video to the changes that need to be made with the winder and how much fun I had out in the field today. So let me sum this up really quickly, starting with the video. And I recognize that the video is shaky. I recognize my hand movements are fast. And I recognize that I probably don't vibe with some of you out there, which is completely cool because I, I do vibe with other people out there as well. And what I will mention is I don't have a huge production. I'm not part of Universal Studios where they're like a whole camera crew. I'm using a Sony camera that has a broken shutter. I had to pry open in order to make these videos. So, you know, again, if it didn't vibe with you, thanks so much for watching. But I really did have a good time building out this wire winder to find faults in my design. And of course, building this out also makes me more aware of how these things work. So if I ever do get to the field and I need to rebuild them or do a field repair, I'll be more knowledgeable on how to do so. The setup was uh, just fine. That wire winder does have a few little modifications that need to be made, such as the zip ties, which I showed you, and moving those holes away from the ring connector ever so slightly. But overall, I'm impressed, and I felt like it was great. As for the setup of the LD6 mast, we see how there's a slight bend to it, which is a little bit of a bend is just fine. I did connect the winder to the top of the mast on that mast topper that I had created, and then we're in an inverted V shape. About halfway down or a quarter of the way down is where the insulator is that connects the antenna wire to the 550 cord. 550 cord is available at Ace Hardware, Hobby Lobby, Michaels, Home Depot, or many, many other places. Uh, one thing I do want to point out, though, is that coax cable was a concern to me. The reason that I have it so close to the mast, and it should actually go closer to the mast, is if it were just to be hanging down, that's a lot of weight just hanging hanging down right and the more weight hanging down from the top of the mast the more stress there could be and i'd rather just protect my investments so that's why i tried to get it as close to the carbon fiber mast as possible while our inverted v is in a shape that is going away from the mast so i had a really good time with this setup i now know that there's a few changes i need to make I got to tell you, though, the conditions were great on 10 meters. And for that matter, I tuned into 11 meters and was listening there as well. On 10 meters, I heard Cyprus on FM, I think it was. And then I heard France, England, Israel. Israel was a really cool one to hear. And then, of course, I made contact with Switzerland on 10 with like 50 or 60 watts. So overall, a great day. Had a lot of fun. And perhaps one of the most rare things we see in this video is a Ford Bronco in its natural habitat that is broken down and <laughs> waiting for a tow truck. All kidding aside, I hope you have a good one. Thanks for watching the channel and take care.